Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday. This is our most recent uh, live stream in my new live stream series, which uh, I have developed to keep everyone who is spending lots of time at home happy thinking about piano. So hello, I'm Lisa. For those of you who are new here, I'm the piano teacher here at Piano Video Lessons on YouTube and also at pianovideolessons.com. So I have a whole series of pre-recorded tutorial video lessons for how to play piano that start right at the beginning for beginners who don't know how to play and don't know how to read music. You can learn how to do both of those things for free by following my YouTube video series. So this set of live streams is just an additional uh, offering that I'm putting together uh, for today. This is Tuesday. Today's topic is learning a new beginner piano piece. And we're also going to talk about pedaling technique because I had a question about that yesterday. So I will do a few minutes on pedaling before we get too far into it. And then also tomorrow we're going to talk about practice uh, tips. I'm going to say practice games to keep practicing fun. And on Thursday, I believe the topic is memorizing music. So hopefully you're going to sit back and maybe you're at your piano, you can uh, practice a few of the things that we're going to try together today. So I'm going to have a quick look in the chat and see who's joining me so far. I see there's 19 of you already having joined and I've got some hellos. I'm seeing Philip Jones. Nice to see you again, Philip. I have Grace Ma here again. Hello again, Grace. I have Asha Ray Official. Hello to you. I have Nicola here again. Hello, Nicola. Nice to see you. I have the Country Homestead Preacher. Hey to you. I've got Dennis Petrea. Uh, thank you for your compliment. Dennis says, I'm a great teacher. And I also have Joanna Gillette from Canada. Hello. I'm also from Canada. Nice to see you here today, Joanna. So if you want to pop your comments into the chat or any questions you might have, I can have a look at those as we continue. And um, and have Petra again here today. Hey, Petra, nice to see you. Oh, I missed one. Oh, I missed a couple. I missed Joshua, uh, who's saying hi. And I also missed Adrian Polly, who's saying hi. And I have uh, Nahuria, Daniel Daniel, saying hello. I'm going to call you Daniel if you make any more comments, because that's easier for me to remember. All right. So, oh, everybody's saying hello. I've got hello from Moses as well. Awesome. OK. so. Please be sure to say hi in the chat. I will check it again in a little while and we can um, continue on with today's lesson. So today's lesson is on how to learn a new piece of music. So there's a lot of things that you probably have to figure out before you start to play a song. But the first thing we're going to talk about is pedal technique because someone had a question about that. So I'm just going to turn off my banner at the bottom here and I'm going to switch my camera. But today I'm not going to show you my hands. Well, I will show you them later. First, I am going to show you my feet. <laughs> All right, so this is new. I've put an extra webcam up today and see I'm wearing some nice warm slippers because it's cold here in Canada. And I'm going to talk about pedal technique. So on a piano, there are three pedals, Move my bench. The first pedal on the far left here is the uh, una corda pedal. And this one makes things quiet. You generally play this with your left foot. There's a pedal in the middle on some pianos. This is the sostenuto pedal, and it has a special job of holding selected keys. And then the pedal on the far right, this is the sustain pedal. So when you're using this pedal, you are going to uh, press it down to give the notes an open sound. So if you listen, you can hear that the notes continue to ring as the pedal is held and if I lift it, it stops the pedal, it stops the notes from ringing. So again, if I press the pedal down, all the notes I play they continue to ring and blend together. And if I release it, all the notes stop. So this pedal can be notated in several ways. And I'll show you the three ways it can be notated. But first, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what's going on here with my foot. You'll notice that my heel is on the floor and I'm sitting in good posture. So that means that my knee is directly underneath the white keys, which gives this angle to my um, 
angle to my ankle. <laughs> so if I was sitting too close, the angle might look like this, and that would be uncomfortable. So I'm sitting back far enough, which gives a nice angle here. It's a bit like driving a car. You want your heel on the floor and your foot on the pedal. If you're not wearing a shoe, then you're going to want to put just the front of your foot on the pedal. So the ball of my foot is resting on the pedal and I can work it like this. So this is fully depressed and this is fully lifted, but you'll notice there's a little bit of an area here where there's a, some play in the pedal where nothing much is happening. This is where it really ends up working and this is where you'll stay if you're playing a piece of music that has pedal for prolonged periods where you just have to release um, and clear the pedal without fully lifting. Fully lifting is all the way to level and then bringing it down halfway is a very, very subtle effect. And then lifting the dampers off by pressing to the fully to the bottom of the pedal and then wiggling your foot, just the toe section of your foot, anytime that you're to clear the pedal and then continue to hold it. So that is how the pedal works. It's the right foot pedal and it's the sustain pedal. So shoe back on. Um, I recommend playing it pedal without footwear unless you generally have to practice the piano with the somewhere that you are going to wear shoes. If, if you're practicing in a practice room that's a public space and you need to wear shoes when you're playing, then definitely practice with some slippers or shoes on. But I usually play barefoot or with my sock feet, but then sometimes I will also play uh, with my slippers on because when I'm performing I need to play with shoes and it's really good if you're performing you should practice in the shoes you'll wear in your performance so that your foot is totally used to wearing those shoes. All right, so I do see a few more comments have popped in here and we are gonna get on to the main topic today, which is how to learn a new piano piece. But before we do, I'll address a couple comments and then I'm gonna show you some examples of uh, pedaling notation in music. So I'm gonna see here that I have Dan from Uganda. Aha, Daniel, Daniel is Dan from Uganda. I've got a CCM bike from Canada. I had a CCM bike when I was younger. Um, now I have RS uh, Balas. Sumbramani. Okay. Hi. How are you? I've got Prachi Sharma. Hey to you. I've got Kirad Official. Nice to see you. Hello. And I have Joshua Ige saying, mostly I used keyboard. Can attachment pedal be added? Yes. Most, very many um, pedal uh, digital keyboards have a pedal um, like there's like an input jack at the back or on the side and it just has a, a cord and you put it on the floor so it'll feel a little different because it looks more like a sewing machine pedal and um, that will give you just a slightly different feel but it does work the same way um, and then I have a horse little saying hello nice to see you today and uh, CCM bike says I find my ankle gets sore am I sitting too close I think you are if your ankle gets sore you're probably sitting too close and putting strain on the muscles around your ankle so my recommendation for how close you should sit when playing the piano is if you make straight arms and fists at the end you should be able to place your knuckles the, the far end of your knuckles is backwards for me it's funny it's not like a mirror uh, you should be able to put the back of, of your knuckle at the far end of the black keys. So if you have a, a piano, you're going to be touching the fallboard. Um, and also, if you look down, you'll see your knees are directly under the fronts of the white keys, not under the black keys, more under the white keys. That gives you a whole bunch of benefits, uh, one being that you can easily reach to, to, to both sides to play higher and lower notes, and the other being that you um, don't get a sore foot uh, ankle from playing pedal because you'll have a nicer angle in your leg. All right, that was a very good question. So now I'm just going to hop on over and share my screen and show you a couple of different ways that you can see pedal markings when they're indicated in music. So the first one is like this. So here you can see at the beginning of the song, there's a line and then a, it goes, it first goes down and then it goes all the way under the music and then it goes up. So this mark indicates that you put the pedal down before you play the first note. You keep holding the pedal down during the entire line and then you lift the pedal up at the end of the line. So that would uh, sound and look like this. Let me see. I'm going to switch back to my pedal view. This is very a very strange view, I'm sure. Uh, so let's just switch it to other camera. I'll move my left foot out of the way. I'm using my right foot when I play this pedal. And I'm going to make these 
equal. Well, they're not equal, are they? Okay, I guess this might be the best one. You can sort of see my foot. And you can also see the music. So it says pedal down, and I'm holding. Now it plays A, A, two, three, E, two. A, A, two, three, E, two, three, lift. So the pedal held for the entire line, and then it lifted off at the very end. And now I'll just show you another example of pedal notation that you might see, and that would be this one. So here you're going to see um, a, a little PED underneath the beginning of this. Let me just make it bigger so you can see it. This little um, this little PED. Uh, the bottom says put the pedal down and you're going to hold the pedal down continuously until you see a little asterisk underneath the music and that's when you lift off the pedal so if i were to play this for you let me see if i can see all the notes at once it would sound like it would sound like this all right here i go pedal goes down And then pedal lifts off at the asterisk. And now my pedal is off. So um, I'm lifting my foot off the pedal. And you can rest your foot on the pedal as long as it's not uh, also depressing it. So sometimes if you're getting a sore ankle, it could be just that you're lifting off the pedal instead of just resting your foot gently on the pedal when it's not being used. So those are two different ways that you can see pedal markings and I'm going to show you a third one when we start to play the next piece of music. So let me just switch the camera back around so that you can see my face. There we go. Oh, very good. And I'm just going to stop my camera for one second because I have to switch my webcam over to the top. So if you have some more comments, go ahead and make those now as I make a quick camera switch. This will only take a second. And I'm going to have a look at the comments here as well. And um, I have a comment. Great tip from the Country Homestead Preacher and I have a question here. Can the lesson be downloaded from your YouTube channel? So after we finish today, you can go back and rewatch it. It will be there on my channel. Um, uh, what can a pedal do? So if you get a pedal for your child to practice on the keyboard, then they will be able to do more piano techniques that are important when learning to play. So that is uh, what you can do. Uh, Vidu Rocks says, hi ma'am, your YouTube lessons helped me a lot as a beginner. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I have so many free videos on YouTube that you can get uh, get lots of basic instruction there. And then uh, Mapna says, so I love it. Great. And uh, Horse Little says, this is the third day. Thank you for your patience. I have followed your channel for several years. The best piano professor on YouTube. Well, I don't know about that, but I do specialize in teaching beginners. And um, I follow some great YouTube teachers myself on YouTube, and uh, they have lots to offer. We all have different approaches. There's room for all of us here. But thank you for your kind words. And then uh, Joanna's asking, do you think it's better to become comfortable with a piece before using pedal? I find I get confused with too many things going on at once. Absolutely. So the next part of the lesson is going to be talking about how to learn a new piece of music. And I chose one that has pedal in it because I had some questions yesterday about playing with pedal. And it's definitely a good idea to leave that until you're actually comfortable playing the piece. Because if you start it too soon, you will be overwhelmed with the uh with all of the things you're trying to coordinate so i think i've switched webcams i'm gonna check it here hmm i did but it's crooked that's okay i can fix the crooked here we go nice okay so i have a piece of music here and i'm going to show you how to go about getting started learning to play a new piece so so many things to do before you start the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to look the piece over. So I'm just going to hold this up so you can see it a little bit better. This piece is called Sky Shades, and that's important to note because the piece's title often tells us something about how it's going to sound. So I'm assuming this is a, a, a piece that you've never heard before. And this is a fairly, you know, intermediately leveled beginner piece. It's not for somebody who's trying to play their very first piece of music. If you are playing your very first piece of music or trying to learn from the beginning, I'd recommend that you go back to lesson one in year one at Piano Video Lessons here on YouTube. Um, so looking at this, we see the title. 
And this is from a book that's a teaching book. So it also talks about the uh, the time signature and it says 6-4, which we can see is here at the beginning of the piece as well. And it even gives you a bit of information here, six beats in a measure, and then it shows quarter note receives one beat. So when you're looking at this, you want to go, okay, I'm going to now count six beats in a measure and each quarter note gets a beat. So now I'm going to look through and see what sorts of rhythms I'm going to have. So I started with the title. Now I've moved on to the time signature, and this is something that I understand. If I didn't understand the time signature, it would be important for me to maybe do a little bit of research or find a lesson about that. Um, but again, a little bit of information helps you at the top. And then we're going to look through the piece. So I'm looking to see that there's quarter notes and then there's dotted half notes. And I know what these are. I know that quarter notes each get one beat and that dotted half notes each get three beats. So I'm continuing to look through the music and I'm starting to notice more things than just the rhythmic patterns. I'm starting to notice that there's some note patterns in here as well. So I'm still looking through everything and I'm checking for all of the rhythmic patterns. So there's no rhythm here that is confusing for me. But so now I'll just go back through the steps, check the title, check the time signature, look for rhythm patterns. Now, the next thing is to look at the notes. Let's just look and see what the range of these notes are. Let's see if there are any notes in here that look tricky for me. If I'm comfortable reading all of the notes on the bass staff and all of the notes on the treble staff, then I won't have to uh, spend any time studying the notes. So these notes are all on the staff. So I will know all of these notes. Now, if you don't know all of these notes, it's probably a, a, the piece might be a little bit challenging for you. And I would recommend that you spend some time working on note reading. So you might want to do the note reading crash course here at Piano Video Lessons, or you might have to get some more practice and use the notes speller for piano. So those are some ways that you can increase your note reading knowledge. And then I'm seeing all these little, you know, half hearts with a, with a line on them. I know these are flats. And when I'm seeing flats, I know what that means on the piano. I see another accidental in here that's like, um, an L and a seven that have been smushed together. So this is a natural sign and I know what that means. So now I've checked for the rhythm and I've checked for the note range and I've noticed some accidentals in the music. I would also want to look at the beginning here to see if there are any accidentals in the key signature. So if you don't know about key signatures yet, then you probably are still um, at the fairly beginner level of playing and you maybe wouldn't know to look back here for key signature. But the good news is there are no sharps or flats at the beginning here for us to remember in the key signature. So this piece is in the key of C. And it does also have some flats. So let's look and see what's going on with these notes. All right, so I still haven't played the song. I'm still looking at all of the things and I'm still making sure I understand what I'm seeing on the page. So what I'm seeing on the page starts off with space notes going up, then line notes going up and then a space note and the line note that I've played before. So just looking at those first two measures of music, I see space, 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 line, 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 and hey, look, the flat is in the middle of both. I go up to a space and then back down to a line. So I can see this pattern and I actually know some of the things I'm seeing by a name. I recognize here some chords. So if you don't know about chords yet, you might not know that this is a C minor chord and this is also a C minor chord. But by knowing those things, you're going to make it easier to read and play this music. It's good enough to know that it goes um, from a space to a space to a space, which means you're skipping up the notes. Then looking at the end of this line, you can see that we have three line notes going up, three space notes going up, and then a line and a space note we've already played. So this pattern starts to seem a lot the same as this other pattern, only it starts higher up the bass staff. So you might notice that I haven't really talked about what every single note is so far, because I'm looking for patterns. I'm going to look down here and I'm going to see that the next line starts off with the exact same pattern that I saw in the first uh, two measures. And then I have a really long series of upward notes that go line, 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 space, 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 line, 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 space. And if I know about chords, I'll know this is a G major chord and a G major chord and a G major chord crossing up to G. So this is sort of an arpeggio of G major. 
Then I can see a bunch of notes going down, 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 down. And I notice that these are chords also. This is a C chord and a C chord, C major, and then crossing down to G and C. Then I have notes going up, space, line, 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 space, 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 line, space I played before. This is the same pattern that I was doing back here, but now starting on um, an F that fo is followed by a non-flatted A. And then last of all, same pattern idea beginning on G and the start of the same pattern as before, but this time with a flat missing and finishing with different notes. So I haven't named all the notes, but I have looked all the way through the piece to see what patterns there might be. And then we're going to go to the piano. All right. So this song is called Sky Shades. And I'm going to find out where it is on the piano. I'm not going to play the notes yet. I'm just going to set up. So I'm going to set my hands with my left five on C and my right one on C. And then I'm going to play skips with a black key on the middle note. So that's third finger. And so I'm going to play five, three, one, one, three, five. Then it says left hand two on a note that I need to name, which is C. And then five plays again. So that was a pattern. I'm going to do it again just to make sure I understand what I'm doing. And you'll notice my left hand played C, E flat, G. My right hand played C, E flat, G. And then I crossed over to C and finished on G. Now the next part, I put set my five up on F and my thumb up on the other F. My middle finger is going to be on a black key as well. So I'm going to have F, A flat, C crossing up to F and playing my right hand five again. So I might want to work on that little bit a few times. So starting at the beginning, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now we talked about pedaling technique yesterday. No, we talked about hands technique yesterday. We talked about having a loose wrist. So you might have noticed as I do my crossing over, my wrist is lifting and then I'm dropping down and then lifting off. And when I lift off, my hands are relaxed and hanging toward the keys. Then when I do F, same thing, I'm lifting off and crossing over. Now I remember the next line does the same thing again. So because I already studied this page, I'm able to get into it a little more easily. Now I'm going to go to the next part, which was G triad, G triad, G triad, G. So it's down here, G skip up, G skip up, G skip up, G. So you'll notice also here I said G skip up because those are skips, G skip up, G skip up, G. I didn't name every note. The important thing is to look for those patterns so that you're able to find the locations of the notes on the page, uh, on the piano. So then I'm onto the third line and I see this grouping of spaces and lines and then going down. Now it has a little left hand in here. So I'm going to start with my right going down a C major triad on white keys and then my right's going to come down and play what's called a fifth because it's a double skip. So from five to one. Now, if you don't know about skips and fifths, you very much should look at, um, I think it's unit two of piano video lessons where I start to talk about intervals and intervals help you recognize distances on the staff as they relate to the keyboard. And that's what I'm talking about here. When I say this is a fifth, I know it's an interval of five notes. All right, now I'm moving on to this next part. It's an F triad, F triad, cross to F. Now I'm also seeing another pattern, which is every time I cross over, I'm playing the note that I started on. So an F triad crosses over to F. And all this time while I'm learning the piece, I'm trying to find patterns and recognize things that will help me understand what I'm playing. Now I'm on the last line. I have a G triad, G triad, cross to G, and finish with five. And then I'll finish down here, C major triad, and then two notes together. So that's me figuring out the piece for the first time as a beginner. Then I'm gonna go back and try to see if there are any tricky spots. So if I recognize that there were some already, then 
I might go right to those. So like maybe this part was tricky. As you're going down the C triad and your right hand has to cross over, maybe you're having a hard time aiming finger five onto that G. So I'm gonna try that a few times, counting out loud to six because it's in six, four time. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, thumb, five, six. I'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so I would practice any spots that gave me trouble. And if I've now worked out all the trouble spots and I'm comfortable playing, this would be when I would start to add the next level of um, information into this piece. I would decide to play it at a steady tempo and there's no particular speed to play this, it just says smoothly. I would also start to work in my dynamics. So here I have soft, medium, soft, soft, medium, loud, medium, soft, medium, loud, diminuendo to soft, Oop. <laughs> diminuendo to soft. So I would go ahead and add that in now. I'm going to play the whole piece from the beginning because I've practiced all the tricky sections and I'm just going to play it through smoothly and with dynamics. So softly, Now medium soft, back to soft, staying soft, now going down medium loud, that's the part that I practiced extra, medium soft, medium loud, Staying medium loud, getting softer and soft. So I've added in the dynamics. Now there is that one last thing. And um, as my friend from Canada was saying, we have to think about adding the pedal in and it's a good idea to do it at the end. So here you see uh, this other kind of pedal marking, which I mentioned before. Um, so he, the pedal goes down and you hold it and then we have this little wiggle up down and that's where you leave your foot all the way at the bottom but you just wiggle your toe up and down a small bit which is enough to clear the sound in the pedal you don't lift it all the way up you just do that little wiggle that I showed you before so that would be the last thing that I would add to this piece so now I'm going to go ahead and play it with pedal starting at the beginning starting softly with pedal smoothly here I go one two three four five six Pedal clear. Pedal clear. Softer again. Staying soft. Pedal clear. Mezzo forte. Pedal clear. Mezzo forte. Pedal clear. And pedal clear and softer and softer and pedal off. All right, so those are the steps to use when learning to play a new piece. I'm just gonna switch my camera back around so I can see you all or you can see me talking um, and I'm gonna check some of the comments. So basically the stages for working on a piece are just to do a big broad question for yourself like what is the time signature what do we need to count to what is the key signature are there any flats or sharps that i have to remember the whole time look for rhythms to see if you recognize and can think about this the timing for all of those rhythms wonder to yourself uh, if i know all of the notes that are on this piece so do a quick scan and see if there are any notes there that are outside the normal range if there's any ledger lines or anything that looks tricky then start to look for patterns in the music so start to really look through the whole thing and see if there are any parts that look similar to each other then see if you can find um, what they might be called if you know anything about pentascales or chords just try to locate those in the music and identify those groups of notes then it's time to start playing the piece by finding your location on the piano and looking at intervals and reading the music very slowly at first until you're comfortable and starting to build the piece piece by piece. Um, then you can start to add in 
other things like keeping a steady beat and um, adding in your dynamics and looking for things like pedal markings. So it's a really a process that starts off with an overview and then double checking your knowledge before you take it to the keyboard. I find a lot of students um, become frustrated if they attempt to do something before they're um, before they're able to um, understand if they don't understand everything and they go ahead and try to play it then they definitely struggle because there's a lot of thinking going on while you're playing so I recommend doing your thinking before you do your um, playing as much as possible and then as you're playing if you need to do some more thinking then I recommend you stop and think and then play again so that you've done your thinking outside of the playing process so you're not introducing little gaps. Um, so I'm just going to pull up some more comments here. I had a comment from Diego Airely asking if you can download the PDF for Sky Shades. The answer is no. It's from a teaching book and I don't own the rights to it. So I demonstrated here with some teaching. I'll show you what book it's from though. It's from Nuna Basic Piano book two and it's on page 44. So if you're looking to purchase that book, you can find it for yourself. Um, I have a super sticker from Horse Little. Thank you very much. That is very generous of you. I appreciate that. Um, and Prabhat Kumar is here and is from India and wants to learn to play piano. Well, you've come to the right place because my web, my YouTube channel and my website are filled with free videos on uh, getting started to play the piano. And Country Homesteader says, any tips on teaching kids to start using two hands? My daughter is very hesitant. Um, so I would say that, um, if she's hesitant, I guess you mean playing two hands at the same time, because this piece that I just played called Sky Shades uses two hands, but they don't play at the same time. They're taking turns. So if she's hesitant, I would say just keep her going on music that uses one hand at a time. And then I would introduce the next thing I would introduce is pen to scales. So that's just some simple five finger exercises that's not a song because it's easy to fail on technical exercises. If you're failing while you're playing a piece of music, you're like, eh, I can't do this. This piece is too hard. But if you're just working on a finger drill, then you're going to find that it's a little bit less intimidating and, and not as big of a, of a cost if you don't do it right or as well as you hoped. So I think those tips might help you hopefully. And then I have a comment here from Prabhat Kumar saying I'm from India and I want to learn piano but I don't have enough money to buy it. Oh that is a struggle. Yeah if you can't afford to buy a piano I think that it becomes an issue. Um, if you're not able to practice it's kind of hard to learn but I guess you could practice on a cardboard piano a little bit and it wouldn't be the same, but I feel for you there. Maybe you could borrow one from someone. Uh, Daniel's looking for private lessons. Well, I have a virtual piano studio. You can find it on my website. And um, Prabhat says, music is my life. It reduces my pain. I know music reduces my pain too. Uh, Daniel's saying, can you help me? Yes, if you come to my website, there is uh, all the information that you need there. And you are welcome. I hope that those tips help your daughter become uh, comfortable playing. Was it your daughter playing both hands? Country homesteader. Yes, that's who it was that asked that question. Um, all right, so we've gone through all of the steps to getting started playing a new piece on the piano. And every piece has different challenges. Every piece has different things that you'll have to pay attention to. And every piece will introduce something different and new that you might want to look up. I think one of the biggest challenges when you're learning to play piano with self-study, which many of you probably are since you're watching YouTube for uh, my instruction today, is that it's hard to find pieces that are paced and giving you just what's what you're capable of doing next. So, you know, if that's the case that you're, you know, you're struggling, you're finding pieces that are too hard and too easy, then I really do recommend that you try to find something that follows a set curriculum that that is progressive. So when, you know, I speak of the year one uh, video series, this is available on my on YouTube and website. It's uh, all the videos are free. So you can uh, self pace your way through that. But every 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 lesson in that series is progressively um, more difficult, but not very much. I built it that way so that it doesn't overwhelm you. And it also gives you um, 
a chance to um, develop the skills that you've just recently learned without feeling like it's overwhelming. And then also, if you're looking for more help than that, I do offer online classes. So I have um, starting next Sunday, I have a beginner class starting that runs through the first four units of year one. Uh, the, the Sunday after that, I'm starting a courting boot camp that is for people that are working on playing chord style piano using lead sheets. That's the unit five from uh, year one. So that will be running simultaneously with the, uh, the, the beginner class. And I have a virtual piano studio. So if you want private instruction and help one on one, you can join the virtual studio where you can interact with me uh, there online and I can give you some personalized coaching. So those are all ways that you can uh, use my teaching and uh, at whatever level you're looking for and whatever um, whatever suits you best. So like I said, some people are perfectly happy to self-study and then other people are looking for some personal help. So that is it for today. Uh, we did, uh, yesterday's topic was how to um, do proper piano technique. The day before that, we talked about reading notes. And tomorrow we're gonna talk about how to practice some practice games and some practice ideas. So I think that means I'm going to have to practice the piano and demonstrate these uh, these games and ideas. Um, could be interesting. Um, I've got a sort of idea how it's going to go, but you know, the plan will unfold tomorrow. I don't know how that's going to go. Um, all right, so uh, I th I'd like to thank you all for coming today, and I'm going to end this live stream. Uh, it's a little bit shorter than the other ones were, but I super appreciate all of you for tuning in, and I hope you come back tomorrow and bring some friends. Happy St. Patrick's Day as well, which is you know, the reason for all the green today. All right, thanks again. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.